Um, so welcome all. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Claire Carouge. I'm the lead of the CMS team. And uh, alone in his big room, uh, drinking his tea is Scott. And as the presenter for today will be Hogger. And uh, for so that UNSW, I know I saw that Danny just arrived. Um, <laughs> so I, at least you can see the CMS team. We're trying to run these trainings um, every week. Uh, we skip if one of the room is not available or things like that. Uh, or, you know, during holidays, we know everyone will be away or things like that. We uh, started with Bash, thinking it's the first thing uh, people have to know when working on uh, HPC, high performance computer. Uh, but we welcome any um, ideas. If you know you need something, uh, just let us know, because that will help us uh, providing training that is actually useful to people instead of just our own ideas of maybe that's useful to someone. Um, yes, and uh, we are recording all the trainings and they will be posted, we have a YouTube channel, they will be posted on this YouTube channel and you will receive an email about it once it's available. Um, I think that's about it. All training will be via video conferencing, so it's, if you're not at the university, you can still join with your own computer whenever, wherever you are. And I think that's about it, unless anyone has any other general questions about the training. Oh, just for the people connecting from your own computers, can you please mute your microphones unless you're asking a question? Just cuts down on the chatter. Okay, Ogre, I think you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, do you see my uh, splash screen, the Unix shell splash screen? Just so that I can confirm this. Claire? Yeah, yes, yeah, no problem. Can you see my, you see, you, can you see my screen the, where it says Unix shell? Yes, yes, yes yeah. no problem. And now you have a terminal. Yep. Yes. Okay, so everything's working fine then. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for the words, Claire. Uh, my name's Holger. I'm the CMS person at Monash. Uh, you should, we have CMS people at all uh, places, at all, at all nodes. Um, you probably have met them by now. Um, if not, talk to me, I'll uh, or to me or Claire and we'll introduce you. Um, we're starting off with a, with a four week, so four times one hour introduction to the Unix shell, particularly the bash. Um, and I'm starting very, very basic. So if you've ever used the bash before, you will probably not find much useful, much, much, many in interesting things today. This is, today is for the real beginner and then weeks two, three and four will build up on this and there might be a even for, for an experienced user, there might be a few tidbits in there that they might find useful or that ha they hadn't realized before. So what is a computer? What does, what does a computer do? Um, a computer basically does four things. Um, it runs programs. It stores data, it communicates with other computers, and it interacts with the user. That is usually you or whoever sitting in front of the computer. Um, and, at the, and, and this, we're talking, and, and the shell is one of the ways that it interacts with, with the user, but it's also um, a way to tell where you how you tell the program, the computer, what you want the computer to do. Um, the shell is a so-called co command line interface, or CLI. 
Um, you pro by today's standards, you're probably used to graphical user interfaces, GUIs, um, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, all these kinds of things are beautiful, colorful, and lots of clicky uh, and lots of things to click around with. Command line interfaces are a very different beast. The it has some very clear advantages over graphical user interfaces. The one is that it's fast over networks. Um, you don't need to transmit a lot of data to actually get things done. Um, and that makes it much, much faster than networks. And the second is it's much easier to give it, com uh, to give it complex pur purpose-specific instructions. Um, of course, it, that comes at a cost. And the cost is that it's far less intuitive and more cryptic. So you will have to know, learn a few things from heart, uh, how to do stuff. And that's where this course comes in. Um, the basic of any command line interface is uh, the read evaluate print loop. That means that, I have to make sure that I follow the, that, that, that I'm looking at my notes so that I don't race ahead too quickly. Um, basically, what it does, it, it's um, the. Can we close the door, please? Because um, the fan is a little bit loud outside. Thank you. It gives you, you sh it gives you a prompt in in uh, in Unix shells. It's typically uh, a dollar sign, and that is and that's the way for the command line interface to tell you, I'm waiting for your next command. I'm waiting for your next instruction. And then you type the command. Uh, you give it the, the you, you type the command, uh, press enter, and then only when you finished with pre when you press enter, will the command line interface read the whole command, execute, execute it, and print any results on the screen. And then it will start again, give, ask you for a prompt for your next command. And that's the, so that's, uh, the read evaluate print loop. So as an example, here I have um, my terminal. It has, the, it has a dollar sign saying, OK, I'm waiting for a command. And I'm entering a command now. It doesn't do anything. It just prints these, these letters to make me so that I can read what I'm typing and make sure that I don't that I type what I want to. I and only when I press enter, it reads the command, um, executes it, and the command produced output, it said uh, this little slash user slash Holger W. And I have a dollar sign again. I can run another command. And again, this, co this continues forever. So, um, how does the shell know what the command is supposed to be? Um, it first reads what is typed. Let's say, let's repeat the command again from before. And it interprets the first word as a program. So in this case, ls. So it searches through various locations where it expects programs to be until it comes to a program called ls. And then it passes the whole thing. So then it passes ls and everything else to this program and executes it. And the ls will then produce output, will give that output back to the shell, and the shell does then prints it on the screen. And then it goes on again. Um, in that sense, it is um, more complex, because you have to remember what these commands mean. Um, 
And if you're typing something wrong, so for example, if I, if I forget the, the space, um, the program will, see, will not find, the, the shell will not find the program with that name and basically say, I don't know what you mean. Um, so the advantage of this is because the shell handles all the, all the input and output, what you can then later do, and that will, that's something that we'll talk about in week three, you can chain, no, next week, you can chain them into um, pipelines uh, where you get the output from one to, into the next. But what I hope that you get so far is um, that the shell is a program whose primary purpose is to read programs, to read commands and execute other programs. And that it's very efficient, but also a little bit cryptic about it. Um, any questions so far? Nothing here, anywhere else? I, unfortunately, because I have, now I have the screen sharing on, I don't see what the other people are doing. Okay, nice. Okay, then let's go, let's go straight on. Can I, how can I? Uh, so, um, let's go to the second, to the next thing. Um, navigating files and directories. Um, the file system is operated by the, is managed by the operating system. So Mac OS or Linux or Unix or Windows. And um, the file system is mainly, or the, the, the purpose of the file system is to hold all the data. Um, the data is held in files, and then you have directories to organize these files so that all these files don't bunch up in one locations to, yeah, like a little bit like a document folder. You have folders and documents inside that folder. Is that? So let's go back to the commands that we had before. If I type um, PWD, the command that I've used before, uh, means print working directory. And you see that I have, in this case, slash users slash Holger W. And how does this work? How, what does it mean? Every, in, in, in Windows operating systems and DOS before that, you had drive letters. In Unix-like operating systems, you don't have that. Everything starts from the root directory denoted by a single uh, slash. And this root directory has different sub, uh, has different sub directories. And then in these sub directories, you have other directories that, always, that, can, that are located in there. Every directory has one parent directory except for root. Well, I think technically root is its own parent directory. I'm not 100%. Uh, but um, one directory can have several subdirectories. For example, here, use, users has Holger W and Nell. And if we look at here, so the print working directory says, okay, this is my, the, the, my current working directory. So everything I do, if I don't tell it anything explicitly, it will affect, will affect this directory. It says slash, so it begins with a slash saying this is from the root directory, go in the directory users, and then in the subdirectory Holger W. So this means in this case, here, users Holger W. But type ls, list contents. Um, that shows me all the, all the files and directories that are in there. And I like the option minus uh, dash f because it 
um, shows me all the directories have a, have a slash appended to it so that it can easily see, okay, this is a directory. This is not a, that is not a, not a file. Whereas other things like cruiser control.log um, is a directory, is, is a file. So that has contents. If you want to look at the, uh, at the, all the different things that LS can do, if you don't know exactly how a program, how the program works, what all these options mean, practically all Unix commands have the, you can add, you can add dash dash help. And that gives you a very simple, um, it gives you a very simple overview about what options there are. So this is, Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, in Unix systems, quickly show you. Um, if I did this help here, I would get a considerably more uh, longer index. Mac OS um, doesn't do that because there's a, there's a second way to get help, and that's the program man, manual. If I type M-A-N-L-S, then I get um, a manual about how to, how, about the program, it's called list directory contents, uh, synopsis, so all the, all the different op options that I, can, that I can give, and then a description, the different, um, the different flags, um, that it understands and so on. So man, the manual page and, uh, and this dash dash help should usually get you going once you know the command. How you get to know a command, if, I, if you think about, okay, I need a command that does X, um, you have to remember or um, Google is a little bit your friend. So you have to, you have to remember, it's, that's one of the cryptic parts Um, yes, so file system. Linux, Linux does not have um, drive letters. The leading slash uh, refers to the root file systems. Uh, directory names are separated by a, by a slash character. So again, if we, uh, um, so we had users slash Holger W, so that's the, that's the separation. And the home, and the home directory in, in, a, in a Unix system, every user has a so-called home directory. That is the basic, the basis for their own, their, where they can store their own data, their little garden where they can put, where, where you can put your own stuff, um, where, where you're meant to put your own stuff in. In Unix systems, it's often slash home slash username. Uh, on Raijin, it's a little bit more complicated. They have too many users. It doesn't work that, that way. Um, and on Mac OS, it's often slash users slash user. Um, so um, a little bit of an exercise. I've shown you before how to use the man page or the help. Um, let's see if you can figure out what the, what the flags minus L and minus h do when using the ls command. I should have put this in there. Um, So of the LS code, what, what do these low, what do these flags do? And how can you sort the output by age of the file directories? How can you reverse that order? Please try to use the man command or the minus minus help if you're on a Unix system. 
Um, so the man page is also available on, on Unix systems uh, to, figure, to, to figure this out. And I'll give you a few minutes. If you have questions, come to me or to your local, uh, your local CMS person that should be in the room with you. How are you doing? If it, you have some idea what's a, what it does, or? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I have to, I'll, I'll continue a little bit. Thanks, I just need to get some information about how long it takes. So if we look at the man page of LS, um, we had the minus lowercase l, Lists in long format, see below. Um, I'll, show, I'll get into detail about this. What was the other minus H? H, uh, when used with the minus L option, use a Unix suffix, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, and gigabyte. So if I type LS minus L, what you can see that I get a lot more information about every single, um, file, uh, about every single entry. So the prusa control.log is still there, but we also now know that it was created on the 10th of November last year. Um, otherwise it would have said, it would say the year as well. Um, it is owned by Holger W and the, has the uh, group Monash domain users. Um, here are the permissions. Um, I'll come to them in, in, a, uh, in more detail later. So these, um, these, these are the things that we do. We also have here, size in bytes. And that is where the H comes in. So we have here now um, everything in, uh, uh, in, in more human readable, that's for the H, human readable numbers. So this is 2.1 kilobytes, 160 bytes. There's much, there's much bigger in my home directory. Um, how can you sort the output by age of files directory? Um, so you have to go through this a little bit. And of course I know it, so I can go straight to minus lowercase t, sort by time modified, most recently modified first. And lowercase r, reverse the order of the sort. So that would be, um, uh, um, most recently last. Okay. Okay, so, but we don't want to be confined to our home directory. Um, we want to change the directories, the change the working directories, and that is done by CD, change directory. So we look at, at we look at this thing, so we see here we have a desktop um, for subdirectory, so you can say cd desktop. And now, if I look at my current working directory, you can see that my current working directory has changed. I'm now in desktop. Um, yeah, so there are a few other things, including the data shell. So I want to go in the data shell. 
So in that way, I can I can go into the subdirectories into this and so on. Um, let's go into data. Now I'm data. How do I go back into the into the parent directory? We we might think tempted to do something like that, C D data shell, but it doesn't recognize it because it doesn't recognize their data shell is not, not a subdirectory of the local directory. So what we can do, like one of the app, one of the options in uh, LS that you can look up minus lowercase a for all. So let's let's look at first of this ls, and if I press minus dash a, and I'll just put the minus capital F to display the directories, you can see that I have there are two more entries. Period and period period. And in Unix systems, the period refers to this current directory, and the double period. Um, refers to the parent directory. So if I say cd dash dash, uh, cd dot uh, period period, then I'm going, I've gone back to data shell. Um, by default, unique, or the definition of if a file starts with a period, it's by default hidden by the ls command. It's still there. If I go to um, my home directory, we'll see that there are a lot more files, if I'm tapping this minus a, that all start with the little um, period. And these are files that are not meant, that are typically not meant for me to interact with. So, um, I can look at them if I want to, I can edit them if I want to, but to make it, to, to, to make them not clutter up my home directory, um, they are hidden by adding this eating period to it. Ah, yeah. Um, so these all, as I said before, the file system is managed by the operating system, not by the shell. So this dot and dot dot are not part of bash or Unix or, or the, the bash or, or any other shell. These are, these are part of the operating system. So, uh, yeah, let's do this. I don't need to do this, um, but uh, another thing is but there is one option that you can give to CD that is not part of the operating system. And let's say I is you see I was in in um, this I was in this directory here and this. In this directory, last, and then I moved to her, to up into my home directory. So now, if I press just cd minus, just puts me back into the last directory that I was in, and it was also prints the directory that I'm that that passed me to. And I can do this as often as I want. It will always switch back between the last. So a little bit like if you have a TV with the last last channel button to quickly switch between where you now and where the last one was. Um, that is part of the CD. But there's one other, um, one other shortcut and that is again part of the, part of the file system. So maybe you should have done it the other way around, but and that is the tilde. If you're a path in Unix that starts by tilde, means that is the home directory. 
So if I enter cd tilde, that gives me all, that brings me to the home directory. And if I press um, cd tilde slash desktop, because the tilde begins, it means that the, it means a subdirectory desktop under my home directory. Um, if you don't give any options, just if you just type CD, what it does is it, put, it puts you into your own home directory. Okay, so we have a little bit of a challenge now. Um, assuming that the working directory is uh, users Amanda data. Which of the following commands could Amanda use to navigate to a home directory, which is users slash Amanda? Have a little bit of a think about it. And then we'll, we'll go through them in detail. There are several, there are several methods that, you, that she could use. So, okay. Number one, who, number one, oops. Number one will not do it because it's a single period. It refers to the current directory. So this will not change the directory at all. Number two would move you to the root directory. Let's talk about this. Difference between root between absolute and relative paths. If a path starts with a with a slash, it's an it's an absolute path. So that always begins at the at no matter where I am in the um, uh, desktop the data shell. No where 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 I am. If I say slash users, it it will always put me into the users directory. Um, whereas if I say something without this, then it will be relative to my current working directory. So this, because the first and only but first character is a slash, it's an absolute path. And because nothing else comes in there, it goes into the root directory. Three, cd slash home slash Amanda. Well, the, okay. Again, <laughs> yeah, uh, assume that home dash slash Amanda is the correct home directory <laughs> because then this was like, oh, this is, this is a Mac OS version. Uh, this is a Linux version again. Uh, CD dot dot slash dot dot would not work because we, with the first dot dot, we would be where we wanted to go, but with the second one, we would go back all the way to the users directory. CD tilde would work because tilde refers, but only if it's at the beginning of the only if it's at the beginning of the path, but in this case it is, refers to the home directory. CD home would not work because it would look for a home directory under data. Next, this one is a little bit tricky. Home directory slash data slash dot dot. It would work. Actually, it does work because data is a subdirectory. We already know this because from the thing. But if data wouldn't exist, then would not be able to, ref to ref uh, if, if, there would, if there were no data subdirectory in your home directory, this would not work. If it was, it would. So you can chain these things after each other. So um, CD, of course, does work because that's the definition if you don't run it with anything. And CD dot dot would also work because it only goes one back. And I need to finish that. Um, LS also can, you can look into subdirectories with the, with the LS command. So you can give it, you can give it, uh, You can give it uh, directories to so look 
where else to look if you don't give it if you don't give a directory it will just look where it is but if you can give it so assuming your worker directory is users peter so you are here in this subdirectory and you type the command ls dot dot slash data what would you expect to see But which one? The, this one, yes, correct. Because you go for dot dot would first go up in this directory, and then in this directory it would look for subdirectory data, which would which it finds, and then you hear, and then you will, it will list the contents of this data, which is this one dot csv. Any questions so far? Okay, um, key points, file system is responsible for managing the data, um, for managing information on disk, it says here. Information is stored in files, which are stored in directories. Directories can also store other directories, which forms a directory tree. CD path changes the current working directory, ls path prints listing of the specific file directory, ls on its own lists the current working directory. PWD prints the user's work, current working directory. Flash on its own is the root directory of the whole file system. A relative path does not, is, a, is any path that does not start, lead, start with a slash, um, specifies a location starting from the current working directory. An absolute path, which does start with a slash, uh, specifies a location from the root of the file system. Directory names and in a path are separate by a slash on Unix and macOS and a backslash on Windows. Dot dot means the directory above this one or the parent directory. A single dot means the, means the current dot. So. Okay, good. Then working with files and directories. Um, how can I create, copy, delete files and directories? How do I edit files? So we, where are we currently? Then, okay. So let's go into um, uh, desktop data shell. So we have certain um, subdirectories. And if you want to create a new subdirectory, the command for that is make direct mkdir. MK make directory, for example, Caesars, I don't know. So now we have the thesis here. By the way, um, again, it's run by the, the, the operating system manages the files. So this here has been created as well in, the, in my normal file system browser. If I were to remove the directory, It's gone here as well. So if you want to, you can, this is, it's, it's exactly the same thing. If I, if, if I were to create a file system here, new file system here, as so I've now created a new folder here called Delmi, but look here now, I have the Delmi here as well. And if I delete it, it's gone here as well. If you create files and directories, here are my golden rules to not make your life miserable. Seriously, I mean it. You can violate these rules. There's nothing preventing you from violating these rules within some reason, but this will make things a lot more difficult for you. Don't use white spaces in your file names. I know it's really convenient in the graphical user interface to just use space, 
Um, but because the Unix shell usually separates the arguments by spaces, it will make things really hard on the shell. Use an, un use an underscore. Um, don't even think about line breaks, <laughs> okay? Please don't. You can, don't. Um, don't begin the name with a dash, with a single mi with a minus sign, because most of the most of the shell programs think that every that something that starts with a dash is an is an uh, is a is a flag for the program, not a file. Best to stick with letters, numbers, the period, uh, dash, and underscore. If you want to use dates, use this format. Why for four let four digits for the year dash two digits for the month dash two digits for the day? Why? Because LS by default um, or sorts files alphabetically. And if you use that format for your day, for the date, then your dates uh, actual ordering and the alphabetical ordering are identical. Um, otherwise, you'll have otherwise. If you were to do it the other way around, then you might have something that re refers to um, the 1st of <coughs> September, would come before something that refers to the 2nd of, of January. Uh, okay. Um, I just, okay, so first, we, before, we can, before we can do this, I have to show you how to move stuff around. Um, so, we have created a subdirectory thesis, so let's change into the thesis, and now let's create a file. <coughs> Nano is a text editor, because creating a file, obviously, it's not, it's not enough to just create a file, you need to put something in it. So, and what is in it depends on what program is used to create the file. Nano is a very simple text editor, very easy to learn. Um, you have down here a little information about what different um, command, <coughs> what commands you can use. The um, hat symbol here means um, the control key. So, um, write out would be Con, uh, would be control and O, or exit would be control and X. So, so if I put something like that. If I want to write it out, I press the control and O, and then it asks me which file do you want to save it to. And because we have already given it the name when we, when we opened it, 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 uh, it tells me, do you want to name it under this name? And I just press enter. And it says, row two lines. And if I now press control X and look at it, there is the draft.txt. And I can now open it again, and it's still there. If you need an empty file, um, there's a command called touch. It creates an empty file. There's, there might be some reasons for you to use it, but you can see the size of, the, of that file is zero. There's nothing in there. I mean, usually you don't want to create a file with nothing in it because you might as well not create the file at all. There are some, some reasons, if, depending on your workflow, but to delete a file, use the rm command. rm for remove. Uh, 
many people prefer suggest beginners always use the minus i option with the rm command. Because it asks you every time you want to delete it, every time it before it deletes, do you, are you sure that, that you want to delete this file? And I can say no, and it's still there. If I were to press yes, why, and it would be deleted. So the next thing is, what if we want to um, move a file? And if we want to move a file, the command is MV for move. So if I want to have um, draft.txt moved into the parent directory, then it's no longer here, now here. move it back into thesis. That's there. You can also use the MV command to rename it. It's, for, it's the same command because for the file system, it's really the same thing. Um, it's on the file system, it just refers to a block of data on the file disk. And then somewhere else it says where, which directory and which file name is it. And the MV just changes this metadata about the file. Um, MV is therefore very, very, very quick. If you want to copy it, again, CP, copy. Now I have two versions of the file. Um, these are li literally, it's, it's a copy. If I want to make changes to one, if I, wa if I want to make sh changes to one, Um, it doesn't appear in the other one. So that's a very, very basic way to make a backup copy of your data. Um, before you start to write your thesis, come to us, there are better ways to make backup copies. But this is, um, are you, you can see that when I um, if I make a subdirectory, I can move code.txt and code dot uh, back to sub here. What this command means. If you give more than two, more than two files, one, two, three, it will interpret as it as move this file and this file. So all of all but the last one, it will be interpreted as files to move, and this will be the destination. So this command works perfectly fine. So now move them in here. Uh, now I'm using the touch command for a moment. But if I now say mv o.back o.txt some file, this will fail. Um, because you can see here a little bit of a help. Either it says, use, give me exactly two, 
one for the source and one for the target, or give me a number of sources and a directory. Some file is not a directory, so it can't, uh, it can't do that. Um, Um, how are we in time? Oh, we're almost finished. Uh, yeah, I think I think I'll go one more thing, and that is wildcards. Um, there are wildcard bash. Um, uh, okay, no, we'll do wildcard next time. I have, I see people already lining up. Um, and I think that uh, we don't want to be. I think I'm good on the time. I think I'm about where I wanted to go to get today. Uh, next week we'll continue with um, with files, working with files and directory, and then we'll start um, looking to pipes and start to see where the powers of the bash, of the shell come in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.